Hello and welcome to Weekly MTG. I'm your host, Blake Rasmussen, and this week it's just me. No guests, because uh, we are going to be opening some of this and some of this. Uh, the Bloom Barrel pre-releases are happening at your local game store this weekend. So ahead of that, uh, we always have this show, which is one of my favorites, to open product, kind of get a sense of what's uh, in each booster, what you can expect, what the opening experience is like, so that when you hit your local game store this weekend, you can pick out what works for you and what you want to pick up. And uh, I know there's a ton of excitement around Bloom Barrel. I'm excited to open this set. Um, it's really adorable. It's cute. Uh, before we get to that, I do have two pieces of news. One you may have already seen and one which is definitely going to be new to you. Uh, the first one is that if you head to IGN.com this morning, there is an announcement of our upcoming partnership secret layer with Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Uh, it's two drops. It's really cool. Head to IGN.com to learn more about that. Uh, second bit of news today. So lately, uh, we have received a number of comments about doing an off-cycle BNR announcement, uh, particularly in relation to Nadu's performance at the Pro Tour, coupled with the timing of the upcoming modern RCQ season, which kicks off in about two weeks-ish. Um, but also in relation to Grief and Legacy and the red-white energy, energy deck in Historic uh, on Arena. Now, first, I want to be very clear. We are not changing our date or issuing any kind of off-cycle ban. Our announced date for the next BNR is August 26th, and we firmly believe that sticking to our announced date and not surprising people with random dates uh, is the best for Magic and the best for players. We tried living in a world uh, a few years ago, if you may remember, uh, where bans could happen at any time, and it, it didn't work. For a variety of reasons, it didn't work. We want players to have confidence uh, in their testing, in their deck choices, and to have firm, known dates when things can change. That isn't shifting. That is our philosophy for tabletop. Now, that said, the results of Pro Tour Modern Horizons 3 and the subsequent timing of the RCQ season have caused us to start taking a look at the timing of our BNR announcements in relation to our play season. So right now, our BNR announcements are tied to set releases. So we have one right before previews start so that people can take in the set and understand what they're looking at. And the goal there is to create fewer points on our calendar where formats can shift for people. However, as we're seeing right now, this can put and is putting a BNR announcement, one where changes do seem likely, right in the middle of an RCQ season. We know that's not ideal either. Um, so we don't yet know how we're going to adjust for situations like this, uh, but we are actively discussing options for our B announcements uh, to make them less disruptive to play seasons and more responsive to pro tours in the future. Uh, and to make sure that you all know well in advance of anything changing. We think that is, is kind of the greater good here. Now, all of that is in line with our philosophy on tabletop. You'll notice I also mentioned uh, the red white energy deck in historic uh, on arena. So digital on arena is a different world with a different philosophy. And our digital formats, especially Historic and Alchemy, uh, well, specifically those two, those are the only two, are, are built to be quickly responsive uh, and to support rebalances instead of bannings. So we're going to do that. Uh, so to that end, we are planning to rebalance several cards from the red-white energy deck uh, to bring Historic a little bit back in line. Uh, we're going to share more about those rebalances soon, but you can expect those to take effect on August 6th. I don't have the exact rebalances in front of me. Uh, they're not available just yet, but we will share more before August 6th. So that is what is happening there. Now we're going to move back to the overhead shots. We are going to look at, boom, 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 these things. Uh, so we're going to open play boosters and collector boosters from Bloomberg. We're going to start, as always, with collector boosters. And I'm going to adjust this so I can see all the things and see chat and talk to you fine people. All right, 
So Bloomboro Collector Boosters uh, do have uh, a few small differences from some recent Collector Boosters. I think the one that's most interesting is that uh, in recent sets we've had, we've typically had some slots that were um, some of the new frame treatments but were uncommons. So Bloomboro, uh, all of the frame treatments, everything that you can get in Collector Boosters beyond the straight up uh, traditional foil common and uncommons and basic land uh, at the front of the pack. Everything after that is going to be a rare mythic, uh, which is a little bit different and kind of cool. Yeah, the packs are printed in Japan, the rares are in front. Uh, we're gonna I believe that these are, yeah. So these are gonna be a little bit different. So the token is usually in the back um, or if they're Printed here, we see it, there we go. All right, so we're gonna show off the tokens. Tokens are pretty cool in this set. All right, let's go. So you're gonna start off, there we go, with five commons, all in traditional foil. So we got Bat Cleric, we got Saza Caps Brew, Sky Skipper Duo, Mind Drill Salient, and then we move into the uncommons. So uncommons, there's gonna be four uncommons here. And if anyone spots a card that I don't hold up to the camera that you'd like to see, feel free to put it in chat and I'll try to hold it up. But we got some of these uncommons. All right. And then after we hit four uncommons, you're going to get a fo traditional foil seasonal basic land. All right. So here these are. So now every basic land type has the four seasons, uh, spring, summer, fall, winter. Um, of note, they don't drop evenly, so it's kind of cute. Uh, think of it as, as seasons of plenty. So there are more spring copies than there are summer, which there are more of than autumn and more of than uh, uh, winter. So it goes 40%, 30%, 20%, 10% uh, in that. All right, and we got that. All right, and then we move into, so this is going to be a traditional foil, rare mythic from the main set. Here we got Jackdaw Savior. The next slot is going to be a commander card. So this can come in a, a few different treatments and it can be foil or non-foil. Most of the time it's going to be non-foil. Um, see, we get extended art for Evercoat Ursine, the hideaway hideaway bear. So that is from the commander set. And then we're going to get two non-foil, well, we'll call them non-foil fancy. It's a variety of treatments. Both are going to be rares or mythics. Both are going to be non-foil. So you're going to see that here with Wick the World Mind. And then you're going to see, um, okay, so this is one of the Imagine Critters. Um, these can come in this slot here. Uh, this is Kaikar Wind's Fury uh, in that uh, extended and, yeah, non-foil. And then you can also get, I'm not saying we're going to, you can also get the Imagine Critters in what I call the Foil Fancy Slot, which is the rare mythic in a foil special treatment. Here we get Glarb, here I'll hold this up, Glarb Calamity's Augur. Let's see if I can block, there we go. All right, and you can see that foiling there on the Frog Wizard Noble. Oh, looks really cool. Okay. And then um, these are, so you're going to get a little sided token, foil at the end. And because there are so many offspring tokens, you're going to tend to get a regular and then an offspring. So this is one of the offspring. This is the offspring for Dark Star Augur. A little adorable, adorable bat. Okay, so next we will go, uh, we've got five foils, three, four, five, and then one, two, three. Bloomboro looks great and its simplicity feels like a breath of fresh air from other sets. Is it something to expect from standard future sets? 
Um, you know, there we were we're gonna talk more about simplicity when we get to Magic on Las Vegas, but uh, in some ways, yes. In some ways, you know, every set is kind of a special flower. But um, you know, when he announced foundations um, back in Amsterdam, and there's definitely a move that you'll see on our end to, to simplify and clarify and, and make things a little bit cleaner. So commander card, Calamity of Cinders. Since my links. Okay, and then we're gonna again move into two non-foil cards of various treatments. So reverse. And then we're going to get the foil fancy. We get this is foil extended by Ray Barterer. And then we get the uh, junior iridescent vine lasher here, the offspring. Art's fantastic. I, I have a feeling these tokens are going to be among the more popular tokens we've ever done. I mean, look at that fish. Look at that fish. Foil Fancy is not the official name. Um, I've been using that name for the final slot and collector boosters for quite a while. Um, mostly because it is always foil and it can be a variety of different fancy treatments. Um, so I just call it Foil Fancy. It's, it's shorthand. Now, if you want the details on any of this, on, on exact percentages, the breakdown of what's available... Um, you can head to dailymtg.com or Google Collecting Bloomboro, um, and you'll find an article that has everything broken down. Uh, so that foil fancy slot, for example, uh, the official name is it's a traditional foil alternate border or raised foil rare or mythic rare. Uh, there are somewhere around like 15 categories it could be. It could be there are five traditional foil borderless mythic rares, one traditional foil borderless field notes, um, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. So I tend to call it foil fancy as a shorthand. Is this set going to be standard legal? This set is legal in all formats, including standard, yes. Um, with the exception of this slot. So um, for those of you who aren't aware, so this symbol here, and when you see BLC down here, that means it's a commander card. Those are eternal legal, eternal commander legal. Um, I'll also note, so we saw a card here. You can get in this slot here the, uh, so there are four courageous critters in the commander decks. You can get those uh, in collector boosters in non-foil. In the commander decks, they are foil. In the collector boosters, you can get them in non-foil. So here's another courageous critters. Queen. Claim that this is his home plane. Okay, we'll stack these up. And then foil fancy here is a jackdaw savior. Okay, and we got another iridescent vine lasher. I really like this art on the baby vine lasher with a fish with a fish eternal legal cards presumably you can play in sealed draft format so the rule for um sealed and draft uh, which you'll use play boosters we'll open play boosters after we do the collector booster box but anything that you open that is a playable magic card in a play booster can be played in sealed or draft so um, there's no legality issues there. It's just whatever you open, you can play, which often adds a really cool, um, if you open special guests, which we'll talk about, special guests can show up in the common slot from the play boosters. It adds a lot of really cool play to your limited games. We got a rat rogue here. And then Tempt with Bunnies. It's 
one's this one's a favorite. Tent with bunnies. Are there serialized cards in this set? Good question. No, there are not. There are not. No, but if you're oh yeah, get rock monster. So imagine critters. Truce in the foil fancy. Uh, no, so there are not um, serialized cards, but if you're looking for the sort of most collectible, chef's kiss, really um, fancy kind of cards, there are 21 raised foil anime cards. Um, those can appear in the foil fancy slot here and only the foil fancy slot. Um, they are pretty rare and very cool. We'll see if we open one. We may not. This, and this was one of the first pieces of art we revealed and it's just so clean, it's gorgeous. Powerful card. Okay, Fountain Port. Are there any plans to make Siege Rhino a Planeswalker? No, there are not. That I know of. All right, we got Mabel. Wishing Well. All right, and here's one of those foil Imagine Critters, Narset. Um, if you go back and watch last week's Weekly MTG, there was a really good discussion with a couple of the art directors for the set um, and talking about what kind of bird this is. So yeah, that Narset is, is gorgeous. You considered unbanning any cards in Modern or Pioneer? It's part of the discussion every time. Um, the question is always raised, so yes. But um, nothing specific to share. Now, we always, when we do the in our announcements, so coming on August 26th, we will do a follow-up show here on Weekly MTG with usually, usually it's uh, Andrew Brown and someone else uh, from the team who makes these decisions to come on and talk about it, and they will certainly talk about any cards that were under consideration. Um, how many total Imagine Courageous Critters cards are there? So, great question. There are 24 total. Um, four of them come uh, are in the Commander decks, so each deck has one in foil, and then you can also get the, those four in the Collector Boosters, and then the other 20 are found in Collector Boosters. Okay. Seasonal Forest, Season of the Burrow is our traditional foil rare mythic. Uh, Steel Burr Champion. Which draft archetype in Bloom Burrow is the best? I don't know. I haven't drafted the format yet. Um, but we are, oh, here's a squirrel mom. Um, we are going to draft Bloomborough on Arena next week on this very stream. All right, and then, so this is an example. We haven't seen one of these yet. The Seasons um, are some cards that get the borderless treatment with different art. So this is the alternate foil fancy version of Season of the Bold. We'll keep going. We're about halfway through the collector booster box and after we do that we'll do some play boosters and do kind of pick one pack one
So the anime ones are the yellow ornament ones. I believe I believe we're talking about the same cards. Yes. We'll see if we open one to get an example. So one of my favorite things about this set are the puns. Um, cash grab. My wife would be shocked to hear me say that, but it's delightful. Pawn profit. Do animal planeswalkers turn into another animal in Bloomborough, or do they stay the same? Um, I believe the answer is that they stay the same. But I am not a lore expert. And could be wrong. Look out. My favorite magic card of all time. That's a tough one. I have, I would say I have a lot of different favorite cards, different categories of favorite cards, cards that make me think of different parts of my life or different decks. Um, you know, I talk about Muldrifter a lot, and Muldrifter is my favorite card, but I also tend not to actually put it in a lot of decks. Um, and then, Phineas. Um, and then Gifts Ungiven is one of my early favorites. Love that card. Then I also have favorites at specific times, um, depending on the commander deck or my Canadian Highlander deck. Here's an Ant Queen. Here's a foil version of the Courageous Critters. And then we got another... Little baby, little baby thorn plate intimidator. Uh, are there dual lands in Bloomborough? Not, um, not a rare cycle of dual lands, no. Is there any chance to get foil versions of the extended art commander cards? They can come in foil. Uh, so I can actually uh, look at the exact breakdown of that. So. That commander slot right here, oh, 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 right there, that's the commander slot, uh, can be one non-foil or traditional foil commander, extended art rare or mythic rare. So you can get the uh, traditional foil borderless commander mythic rares drop about 2.8% of the time in this slot. Um, most of the time it's going to be non-foil. Oh, wait, it says... Oh, the extended art commander ones. Doesn't look like you can get them in foil, no. I'm, I'm double checking the rest of this. Traditional foil extended art rares. Don't believe so. All right. One, two, three, four, five. Can 15 squirrels actually defeat Emrakul? Like in lore or in gameplay? Because in gameplay, yes. Da, 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 da. Do you know why Growing Rights of Itlamok got reprinted into standard, but Search for Kanta did not? Um, I don't now if i had to make a guess um because um Ix caverns of ixlon was all about being underground uh search for his conta didn't really make sense to print growing rights of itlamok it was you know it's a it's a right so it can be done anytime uh can be done in a cave you can't really search for as conta in a cave when it's already been found. So my guess, if it was ever considered, would be flavor reasons. Didn't, didn't think I'd have an excellent question to answer. Okay, and then we got an Ember Heart Challenger. East Prowess 2-2 two -two with Valiant. That's a pretty strong card. I'm going to die to that card a lot. Any arena codes for drops? No, unfortunately not. 
Where would you put BLB power level compared to the rest of sets in standard? I don't know. You know I mean, the, you know, the big question is, we j is rotation just happened. So I don't know what standard is going to look like. Um, I'm also not a developer, so my keen sense of power is not always going to be accurate. Uh, so the answer is I don't know yet. I'll, you know, it may, there's, there's a lot to be played with. Um, you know, I will say I was looking at the set for Canadian Highlander and Commander, uh, and I started pulling out more cards than I expected. So whether I'm right about them or not, I don't know. But, you know, there are, um, you know, for example, Hardfire Hero. It, you know, it's a pretty simple 1-1 one, one for red, but this is, you know, this is a spell that can go into a lot of decks. It's a really powerful one drop. So who knows? Did rotation happen already or is it the end of the week? It is when Bloomboro is... Uh, legal. Bloomboro is legal as of the pre-release. So rotation has not happened yet. There's not like a gap when stuff rotates out but the new set hasn't come in. Great question though. And then rotation on Arena will happen next week when the set releases on Arena. Fabled Passage, one of the great reprints in the set. Nissa, who shakes the world as a frog. So delightful. And then Keen Eyed Curator. I mean, like, this Keen Eyed Curator looks kind of unassuming, but. Um, Super powerful. Uh, it's a 3-3 three, three for two mana that can uh, eat graveyards, kind of like a scavenging ooze. Uh, and then it can get, uh, it can become a 7-7 seven, seven after exiling enough. So yeah, there's, if you're looking for power, there's definitely some here. Keen Eyed Curator is one of the ones I'd look at for Canadian Highlander, for example. Um, there's also a bunch of uh, cards in this set that make, that, that have more to do with food, a lot of the, the foraging stuff. Um, and so food is kind of building up as this, this archetype that's really unexplored, um, or at least underexplored. And there may be a lot more. One, two, three, five. One, two, three. What is Canadian Highlander? Uh, first, we'll pause. We got a, a winter land here. Winter swamp. Uh, Canadian Highlander is a format that I talk about uh, probably as often as I should. It's, it is a singleton format without that uses... Um, you can play any card ever printed with a few exceptions, um, but it uses a points list instead of a banned list. So like you can play Ancestral Recall, you can play Time Walk, but uh, there are restrictions on how many you play. Anyway, it's my favorite format. It's pretty niche, but I love it. Manifold Mouse. That's, that looks really cool in the foil. And then we got Baby Rust Shield Rampager, followed by some food. Vintage Cube Constructed is a really good way to describe Canadian Highlander. All right. What card or cards are you most excited to play with from Bloomboro? Oh, man. Um, can, I, can I say Bird Narset? Um, I do really like the Courageous Critters. I'm very, uh, I'm intrigued by the seasons. 
I think the seasons are a really cool design that's unique in a way that we don't often see. Um, with mix and match modal and, and how much. And I, I think, you know, a spell like Cryptic Command, which has a bunch of different options, you usually end up countering a spell and drawing a card like 80% of the time. I think the seasons are going to be really, they're going to create really unique play, um, play moments where the mode is really going to be dependent on the situation. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with a lot of the seasons. This mountain is gorgeous. This might be my favorite of the seasonal lands. It was one of the earliest ones we revealed, and it's gorgeous. Dawn's Truce, Story Spotlight card. Polyward Prodigy. Then we get Tender Wild Guide here. Castrol the Windcrested. And Foil Fancy is going to be Mist Breath Elder. And we get a Tender Wild Guide. Little baby Tender Wild Guide here. So, just adorable. Uh, did we discuss missing the BNR announcement already? Yes, we did. I did it at the top of the stream. Uh, I know the team is probably uh, making the clip as well to share on social media. We just want to, you know, we saw a lot of the comments and we wanted to communicate clearly um, that we believe it's best to stick to our pre-announced dates. But we are reevaluating the timing of our announcements versus our play season. That's the short version. Seasonal forest here. Tower Port Mage. Sword of the Squeak. Again, puns are just on point in this set. Iridescent Vine Lasher. Oh, that Baleful Strix. Yeah, that one's just so good. Love that Baleful Strix. And then, okay, we did it. In the very last pack, the very last card. So this is Clement the Worry Wart in that anime style with the special foiling. So, yeah, get a good look at that. Very last pack, yeah, nice. Yeah, so this is, if you open one of these in the anime style, this is, this is as rare as it gets in the set. Yeah, that's really cool. Clement is a, Clement is a cool one too. All right, yeah. Okay, we are going to switch to Commander, I'm gonna move some of these around, keep that there, okay. Uh, or not Commander, we're gonna switch to Play Boosters. Do a little pack one, pick one here. Put these off to the side. Do you consider making, did you consider making Winter Basics to be snow covered? I don't think they did. Um, was there talk to have a ban restricted announcement shortly after the PT? We've uh, that is on the table for future cadences. Um, we, you know, I'll be honest. We discussed it seriously, um, but decided that the best course of action was we said when the BNR announcement would be made. People made decisions around that. We're going to stick to that. Um, Again, that said, we do think it's a good point that RCQ season in the middle is going to be disrupted and we'll have people, you know, it'll change the metagame. Um, assuming that there is a, a, an actual change at that point, which I think is likely. 
And so we're really aware of that. Uh, we are going to look at um, possibly either changing our cadence, tying it to the um, to the, the play seasons. A couple things are on the table now. Uh, so we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we will probably make some changes for the future so that this doesn't happen again, or at least not in this form. All right. Okay, so let's do some pack one, pick one. Um, I will call out if we get a card from the list. Otherwise, these are pretty straightforward, much like play boosters that we are now used to. So seven commons, or eight commons, so that means one of them is a wild card. And then we get some uncommons here. Strike force with the puns. Hugs. And then we get one of these. So you'll get a non-foil basic of the, uh, oh, it's a winter one too. In here, we got an art card. These are cool. All right, and then high stride. All right, so right off the bat, we got a few options. Um, Hugs is obviously a very strong card. Uh, it's gonna lock you into red-green. It is probably just straight up the most powerful card in this pack, so I think it's likely a the pick. Yes, these are play boosters. So this is what you're gonna open when you go to a pre-release and play in a pre-release event this weekend. You'll use these. Uh, you'll get these out of your pre-release pack. Use them to build your deck. So if I were drafting this, um, you know, again, not knowing anything about how the archetypes play out, Hugs is clearly the most powerful card. It's a 5-5 five, five Trampler for four. Uh, if you can make the mana work, and then additionally on top of that, you can get some cards out of it as well. So it's probably the pick. Banishing Light is obviously a really strong removal spell. And then from there... Maybe Daring, let's see. Daring Wave Rider is pretty cool. Uh, I, it's probably Strike Force. It's probably this, then Vanishing Light, then Strike Force, then Daring Wave Rider. Yeah. How many hybrid cards are in the set? Uh, it's a common cycle. So it is a common cycle of uh, 10. Yeah, the flying double strike for three is pretty good. So, uh, yeah, I would say this is this is my rough order. Again, having not played the set, I think this is my order, my pick order for that pack. Set is cute. It's adorable. People have spoken. They love adorable sets. All right. What is the philosophy behind having list cards in a draft environment? Um, the philosophy is that uh, they are cool and rare and they create stories. Um, and also, you know, they're, we want anything in the play booster to be playable. We don't want you to open a play booster and have to wonder if a card can be in your draft deck. That's not a good experience. And we also want people to open play boosters and find exciting, cool things. So those things together, put the list in there. Um, let's see. So a couple cool options here. Um, you know, by way bar, so the rare, always got to look at the rare, especially when a set's new. Uh, whenever you expend four, you may discard your hand. If you draw two cards, a three, three menace for three. It's decent. It's it's pretty good. Um, there are scenarios where I can see not uh, not taking that. Fireglass Mentor. Uh, at the beginning of your second main phase, if an opponent lost life, exile the top two cards. Choose one. That's um, you know that this is one of the signpost uncommons. Tells you to play lizards. Tells you to make your opponents lose life. This card's really strong. Um, I would you know it might even be stronger than Byway Barter. That said. Pack one, pick one. A lot of value in staying red, so I might stick with barter here. Um, da, 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 da. I would say, you know, the other option, Tempest Angler, lets you stay pretty. Oh, no, this is it's it's Driftgloom Coyote. 
Um, Drip Bloom Coyote is, is a removal spell and a creature. Uh, these sort of fiend hunter effects, if you're old like me, um, Banishing Priest, if you're a little younger, are, are always pretty strong. So I would say you couldn't go wrong with these three. And again, as the draft format evolves, it may be a clearer answer, but I would stick with one of these three. Do you believe them from play practice be warping from the list perspective? I don't. No, they, they show up every once in a while. They're really cool. They make cool stories. Um, but I mean, you know, something like uh, Swords to Plowshares is a really good removal spell, but it is still just a removal spell. Um, you know, Frogmite's not going to warp any games. There are the occasional... Um, list cards that are incredibly powerful and can win you games but i wouldn't say any more than a you know top tier mythic rare or sometimes uncommon so no i, I don't i don't believe they're warping i think they're really cool all right here um wick the world mind so the cool thing about this card you could you can ignore the last ability. The last ability is definitely gravy. If you can make it work, awesome. Um, but you can just play this to where whenever another rat enters, you get a snail um, or you get bigger snails. Like, this is fine to draft it as if it's a mono black card. Um, it does put you into rats. You want to draft rats, but if you're drafting black, that's totally fine. Um, I would say that Banishing Light... Um, Starlet Soothsayer, maybe, um, as a flyer, as pretty core. I, I don't think I'd pick it over Wick, though. Um, Parting Gust is also very good, where you can turn, it's, you know, it's removal, where you can just turn a creature into a fish. So I'd say probably Wick, then Parting Gust or Banishing Light. Will the list slot continue to be special guests only in the future? I believe we have Dockside and Mana Crypt on the list before BLB. Um, the, uh, I'm not going to say definitively what the list will be in the future because things obviously can change here and there. Um, but we are moving away from the, uh, the reprints with uh, the Planeswalker symbol in them. Um, let's see. Speaking of Fiend Hunter, why was the return the XL card changed from a trigger to a static effect? That was to get rid of the loophole where a, um, you could sacrifice the thing, the creature while it's on the stack, exile the card um, forever. That was not the intended function of the card. And so they moved away from it. Okay. Um, here, I mean... Pawn Prophet. I mean, this might be my... It's so simple and so clean. This might just be my... It's definitely my favorite common in the set. I like drawing cards. I like creature. It's like half a mold drifter. It's great. Um, from there, so, um, you know, we got an additional rare in this pack. We got the Jackdaw Savior. That card is pretty powerful in the birds deck, the blue white birds deck, and it's pretty powerful even just on its own. It's a three one flyer with some additional text. The um, paw patch recruit is also really strong and might be the actual pick here. Um, you know, anytime you look at offspring cards, it's it's a, it's a form of card advantage. You know, you, this can be. Two bodies for three mana, and um, it can pump other creatures. Now, most of the time in draft, when an opponent controls a spell and targets one of your creatures, uh, it's probably killing it. So this is going to be a 2-1 trampler a lot of the time, but um, the offspring means that your opponent has to use two spells, then you get thrown plus one, plus one counters. So I do think this card's pretty strong. So I'm going to say we're going to go... Paul Patrick Recruit, Jackdaw Savior, Pond Prophet, and then probably Starscape Cleric. 
I think early on, at least, I would value offspring fairly high. Um, just having creatures that come with bonus creatures is pretty strong. All right, let's see what else we got. We got 15 minutes left in the stream. All right, so question is for you all in chat, would you like to see more play boosters or would you like to go back to collector boosters for the last 15 minutes? Basic land. Play collector, play collector. Okay. Uh, keep putting in your selection in chat and we'll pick after this. All right, here, uh, let's see, it's probably, yeah, it's, it's Tender Wild Guide. Again, Offspring I think is really powerful. This is one of the better Offspring cards. Not only does it ramp to let you play more Offspring cards, but it can it's a mana creature that gets bigger as the game goes on and so it isn't irrelevant. Um, so I think this is a pretty clear tender wild guide. I think after that, Moonrise Clerics is going to be really important for the Bats deck. Um, Jolly Gerbils uh, intrigues me. I don't know how often we're going to be giving gifts in this format, but it is a 2-3 for 2 mana uh, that has the upside of, of drawing some cards. So I think that that one may secretly be a, a pretty good uncommon or we may not gift enough for it to matter i'm not sure yet um and then we got some sugar coat as a removal spell booming blast is a pretty good removal spell all right um collector collect I, all right i see more votes for collector than play so we will switch it back up and we'll just do collector until the end of the stream this open and while we do that we can look at uh, Narset and Clement two coolest cards we opened in my opinion all right uh, it seems like the rare cards are busted for draft almost all of them are first base. so there's a little bit of bias on my end and also kind of in how I and some other people approach a set when it just re first releases. Because rares tend to be intrinsically uh, more powerful, usually, and because um, you get to draft them less often, so you get fewer reps with them, early on in the format, I tend to prioritize drafting rares first. Um, to get a sense of their power level to because um, I, I may not who knows when I'm going to get to draft that card again so I tend to probably overvalue rares early on like it's entirely possible that out of some of those packs where I said the rare was my choice that the actual choice is like banishing light or even some uncommon you know there may be some archetypes that prove to be stronger and you want to be in those who knows why are there two different set logos? Great question. So one of these set logos is the main set. That's going to be most of the cards as you open. The other one are, is going to be Commander. So this slot here, Commander cards, um, they have a different set symbol because they are only legal in Eternal formats, uh, Legacy and Commander. Fatal Passage, nice. Another, another Frog Nissa. Keeping good on frogness and tree Karn the great creator. I love I love this art so much. Love it so much. Ooh, Finch formation. This token's also great. The art in this set is just just top notch. Was there a discussion to include squadron hawks in the set because of the flavor? I have no idea. Not that I've heard. Um, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't. All right. 
get some more comments too. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four. All right, and then we get this. Foil hugs. Rapid augmenter from the commander set. Non foil fancy for two. Mockingbird. And then foil fancy is to Rebby. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to take the time to do this. Like I said, this is why, uh, this is one of the, oh, whoops, I opened the play booster. That's not what we're doing. Uh, this is one of my favorite shows. Opening magic cards is fun. Are there cards that are specific to the collector booster or is it different? Uh, just start. So the um, Imagine Critters are cards that, they're reprints with specific art that you can only get in the collector boosters. But there's no um, mechanically unique card that is only found in collector boosters, if that's the question. <coughs> that tickle in my throat. All right. The foil Jace the Mind Sculptor. That would not be bad. I get this question every time. What happens to the cards you open on stream? I give them to my team. Uh, ask everybody to create a list of cards they want. And then I kind of divide them up. <coughs> hmm. This is in the room. And Dawn's Truce. Both versions of Dawn's Truce are gorgeous. Was there a card you're looking to open for yourself? There, there are a number of the uh, Courageous Critters I really like. Teferi, Narset, Baleful Strix. Like I said, I play a lot of Canadian Highlanders, so things I can play in that format tend to be my favorite. I also, um, you know, I have a, you know, like you, you know all the things about my commander decks. I have a foil, a zombie, uh, all foil, nearly all foil, uh, a zombie wizards deck. So I always look pretty closely at, and there are a bunch of wizards in this set and some good ones. For example, Valley Floodcaller um, that are wizards and are mono blue and come in foil. And I tend to look for those too. Murmuration. Get some storm crows. Yeah, the cards are beautiful. Like I said, the art, the frame treatments. Okay, here's a cool one. So we haven't gotten to talk about this yet because this is the first Three Tree City uh, that we've opened. Three Tree City also gets the seasonal treatment. Um, so there are, uh, in this full frame, uh, there are seasonal versions of this. Now, unlike the basic lance, these drop all equally so uh there's the the winter one is not rarer than the other three seasons for three tree city um, but really cool there are four seasons for three tree city and foily chatterfang and paw patch recruit guys cradle at home there we go All right, we got about six minutes left. Surfing Otter, yeah, oh, I know wherever that went. All right, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Stocking the pantry. I love this art too. It's just got its own vibe. Okay, we get the mountain. Dark Star Augur. <laughs> F 
thickest in the thicket. This and Jacked Rabbit make me really happy. Now we got a Whisk Veil Forerunner. The Valley Might Collar. And Foil Fancy is Ember Heart Challenger. Pretty epic art there. Thickest in the thicket. One, two, three, four, five, one, two. I, I'm pausing because the, the art's just great. Like, this is one of the first pieces of art we showed off. And it just really captures the vibe of Bloomborough. And then this one, it's just Ruthless Negotiation. It's just, it's super unique. Looks fantastic. It's so good. Yeah, the foils, the foils do go hard. And this one, Forest, Infamous Cruel Claw, Bellow, Bard of the Brambles. So this is just noting again, you can get these full art um, if you for non-foil versions of the commanders, they come in the collector boosters. Valley Quest Caller. Another Baleful Strix. And then a foil Three Tree City. This one looks like fall, autumn, probably. Nice. Uh, are the commander cards in play boosters? No, they are not. One, two. This is just, if you look at the weekly MTG after show, you'll see some cards in there that like don't belong to mechanics. They're just kind of in there. That's usually because I like them for some reason. This runaway together just makes me happy. It's delightful. Uh, so is the list just the 10 mythics? Correct. It is just special guests for this set. Kidnap, again, puns on point. 20 toed toad. Tongue twister. Byway barter. Is that a sexy raccoon? Kinda. Here's a glarb. Calamity's Auger. Keen-Eyed Curator. Again, that card is card is real strong. All right, we got two minutes left, so this is going to be the last pack. Uh, next week, we will be back playing Arena, uh, playing Bloomborough on Arena. And we will just draft, talk about the set, answer any questions we can. A uh, couple reminders that, uh, I mean, if you don't know, Bloomborough pre-releases are this weekend. Check with your local game store. I highly recommend that if you haven't already signed up, pre-registered, um, or inquired about the pre-release, highly recommend you do that. This is proving to be one of the more popular sets we've done in a really long time, so I expect pre-releases to sell out in a lot of places. So definitely call your local game store, check on that. Um, and then in the meantime, while you're on the internet, you might as well check out IGN.com to learn more about the Monty Python secret layer uh, drop, Monty Python Holy Grail. Um, and then if you are interested in the BNR discussion we had at the top of the show, um, I believe our team has clipped it or uh, in some way put it on social media, or you can just find the clip at the beginning of the show and re-listen. Otherwise, we are out of time for today. Thank you for tuning in. Check out Bloomboro uh, at local game stores this weekend for pre-release events, releasing globally the following Friday. Uh, until next week, have a good one.